the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, the much awaited Sri Lanka Thailand free trade agreement would be implemented by both governments from the 1st of January 2025. All elevations of tea witnessed an increase in both LKR and USD terms in comparison with the corresponding years. The downturn at the Colombo stock market yesterday seems to be carried forward to yet another trading day, as both the ASBI and S&P SL20 ended in the red today. And Asian shares pulled back from a 32-month high as the impressive rally in Hong Kong paused, while Japan's Nikkei surged. From Studio 24, here's Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. A very good evening and thank you for joining us. The much-awaited Sri Lanka-Thailand free trade agreement would be implemented by both governments from the 1st of January 2025. This is according to the Thai ambassador in Sri Lanka, Paitun Mahanapur, during the sidelines of the Thailand-Sri Lanka Cultural Association, AGM, held in Colombo. He said all the documentation in this regard has been completed from both sides and the implementation will take place from the 1st of January as scheduled. This incidentally is Sri Lanka's fourth FTA after India, Pakistan and Singapore, while two more with Bangladesh and China are pending. Currently, there is a drop in bilateral trade between the two countries and this FTA will help to increase trade between the two countries and Sri Lankan entrepreneurs would have a new market to export with better tax concessions. And Sri Lankan entrepreneurs would have a new market to export with better tax concessions. FTA will also help to woo more investments from Thailand to Sri Lanka as well. Thailand was Sri Lanka's 39th export market in last year. Total exports from Sri Lanka to Thailand in last year amounted to 47 million US dollars, representing a 20% decrease compared to the 2022 year. Precious and semi-precious stones became the dominant export item, accounting for 52% of the value of Sri Lankan exports to Thailand in last year. The ambassador said that with Thailand offering free visas for tourists of many countries, including Sri Lankans, there's an increase in local outbound tourism. Forbes and Walker Research said all elevations of tea witnessed an increase in both LKR and USD terms in comparison with the corresponding years. National tea sales average for the last month this year recorded as 1,207 rupees and 99 cents, showing an increase of 19 rupees and 50 cents. This is with comparison for August this year, which is an average of 1,888 rupees and 49 cents. In comparison to the September last tea average of rupees 1,165 and 72 cents, shows a positive variance of 42 rupees and 27 cents year on year. Meanwhile, high grown average for the month recorded a decrease of 21 rupees and 26 cents month on month, while an increase of 75 rupees and 39 cents and 0.49 dollars is recorded year on year. Medium growth average for the month recorded a positive variance of 8 rupees and 99 cents and 0.02 dollars month on month. In comparison to the corresponding month last year, shows an increase of 20 rupees and 39 cents and 0.30 US dollars year on year. Low grown average for the month recorded an increase of 26 rupees and 1 cent and US dollars 0.8 month on month while the year on year average shows an increase of 33 rupees and 48 cents and 0.40 US dollars in the corresponding month last year. All regions recorded positive variances during the period from January to September this year in comparison to the corresponding period in 2023 in Lankan rupees and US dollar terms. A Gazette notice signed by current Governor Nandalal Weerasinghe says Sri Lanka's central bank has cancelled a process that paid a pension to governors who are appointed from outside the agency. According to the earlier rule, a person appointed as a central bank governor would be deemed to be an employee and would receive a monthly pension irrespective of number of years of his service equal to 74% of the basic salary last paid to him. If a person was appointed as governor before the 1st of January 2015, he would get a pension only after the 1st of January 2015. According to the earlier rule, provided in the event criminal investigation or proceedings are being conducted before a court of law in respect of a former governor, pension payment to such former governor shall be stayed or suspended until the conclusion of such investigations or proceedings. Where the said criminal proceedings results in the former governor being convicted for a criminal offence, such former governor shall not be entitled to the receive of pension payments. Under the new Gasset notice, pension payments to a person who has been appointed as the governor shall be discounted with the effect of 11th of September this year and no claims for pension payments shall be entered by the Central Bank of Sri Lanka after the said effective date. 
Along with these updates, the high-level delegation from the International Monetary Fund engaged with the newly formed government led by President Anur Kumar Adisanayake. The meeting held at the Presidential Secretariat featured cordial discussions between the IMF delegation and the economic team of the new government. The Embassy of Sri Lanka in Brazil, in collaboration with the Sri Lanka Tourism Promotion Bureau, participated in the ABAV Expo 2024, which is one of the leading travel fairs in Brazil and Latin America. The 51st edition of the ABAV Expo 2024 was organized by the Brazilian Association of Travel Agencies, which brought together key stakeholders in Brazil and Latin American tourism and leisure industries. Over 150 exhibitors from the industry and 15 international tour agents and diplomatic missions representing Argentina, Peru, Colombia, Italy, Botswana, Mexico, Morocco, the Dominican Republic, Uruguay, Nepal, New Zealand, Ghana and Sri Lanka participated in this year's exhibition. Over 400 visitors including travel traders, tour operators, hoteliers, journalists and new destination seekers and etc. visited the Sri Lankan booth. The visitors were provided information on Sri Lankan tourism such as travel destinations, leisure activities, Ayurvedic treatment facilities and gastronomy. They also had the opportunity to taste the different flavours of Ceylon tea. Ambassador of Sri Lanka to Brazil Sumit Disanayaka and Council of the Embassy Chaturika Pereira had a key role in promoting Sri Lankan tourism. Further promotional videos on Sri Lankan tourism were screened on the wide digital screen at the main entrance of the convention centre. ABAV is the most representative travel entity in the Brazilian tourism industry with over 2,200 members. The event of this year attracted around 10,000 visitors. Let's take a short commercial break. Market updates on the other side. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. The downturn at the Colombo stock market yesterday seems to be carried forward to yet another trading day as both the ASPI and S&P SO20 ended in the red for the second consecutive day. The outlook for tomorrow remains slightly unclear. For more details on the CSE, we have with us Nagusan Balachantaran from Capital Alliance Securities. Today, the Colombo Stock Exchange concluded on a mixed note brought on by profit-taking among market participants. The market ended at 11,956 points, marking a 22-point increase from the previous session, with a turnover of 1.3 billion rupees. The SL20 index, however, experienced a downward movement of 19 points to end the day at 3,490 points. Notable institutional engagement was observed across various sectors with high turnovers recorded on Sampat Bank, Lankim Developments and Digital Mobility Solutions Lanka. The top five gainers for the day were SMB Leasing Non-Voting, Blue Diamonds Jewelry, Industrial Asphalt, Office Equipment PLC and Selinko Holdings. The top five losers for the day were Blue Diamonds Jewelry Non-Voting, Tesagro Non-Voting, Lake House Printers, Aiden Expense Hotels and Cheminex PLC. The data from the new Purchasing Managers Index on construction has been released and there are more impacts following the deflationary status quo of the Sri Lankan economy. For analysis, we have with us Tarusha Ashokar from First Capital Holdings. In a historic turn of events, Sri Lanka has recorded its first instance of deflation for the first time since 2015 with the Colombo Consumer Price Index registering a notable decline of 0.5% in September 2024. This marks a significant shift from the 0.5% inflation rate observed just a month earlier in August 2024. So the decrease in inflation is attributed to the substantial reductions in both food and non-food prices. Food inflation fell to negative 0.3% compared to 0.8% in August 2024, while non-food inflation dropped even further to negative 0.5% from 0.4% in August. Additionally, co-inflation, which excludes volatile items, saw a slight decrease from 3.6% in August to 3.3% in September 2024. So the overall price decline is largely due to the administrative price adjustments that have effectively lowered key cost drivers including food, fuel and water tariffs. 
the sustained drop in vegetable prices along with the impact of reduced fuel and water tariffs indicates that inflationary pressures have significantly eased in the short term. So the CCPI has shown a continuous downward trend since March 2024 with the only exception being in June when the currency faced pressure from an influx of liquidity stemming from the dollar purchases. So this recent shift in the economic landscape provides a sparkle of hope for consumers who have been dealing with rising prices for many years. Gold slipped slightly today, moving within a narrow range as investors remain cautious ahead of important U.S. economic data that could indicate the extent of potential interest rate cuts by the Federal Reserve later this year. Spot gold dipped 0.1% to $2,653.95 per ounce, fluctuating within an $11 range. Notably, prices recently reached a record high of $2,685.42 on September. Meanwhile, U.S. U.S. gold futures rose 0.2 percent to $2,674.40. Israel bombed central Beirut, killing at least six after its forces suffered the deadliest day on the Lebanese front in a year of clashes against Iran-backed armed group Hezbollah. And Perth Mint's gold product sales touched a 10-month high in September, while silver sales hit a seven-month high. Oil prices increased today amid concerns that a widening conflict in the Middle East could disrupt crude oil flows from this vital exporting region, despite a more favorable global supply outlook. Brent crude futures rose 1.27% to $74.84 a barrel, while U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude futures climbed 1.41% to $71.09, with both benchmarks initially jumping over $1 earlier in the session. However, many investors remained unfavorable noting that global crude supplies have not yet been affected by the unrest in the region and OPEC's share capacity is helping to alleviate concerns. OPEC has sufficient spare oil capacity to offset a complete loss of Iranian supply if Israel targets that country's facilities. The Sri Lankan rupee has depreciated slightly against the US dollar in commercial banks today compared to yesterday. According to the commercial bank, the buying rates of the US dollar have increased from 289 rupees and 9 cents to 290 rupees and 33 cents and selling rates from 298 rupees and 75 cents to 300 rupees. Now we'll take a look at the Sri Lankan rupee's performance against other global currencies. Let's take a short commercial break. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. The shares of the digital mobility solutions Lanka Limited commenced trading on the Colombo Stock Exchange today. The shares are listed on the main board of the CSE under the passenger ground transportation sector. The occasion was marked with a special bell ringing ceremony. The company's offer for sale of 43,474,179 ordinary voting shares at 36 rupees per share was successfully oversubscribed by 2.7 times, demonstrating strong investor confidence in its prospect. The event was attended by Digital Mobility Solutions Lanka Limited founder and CEO Mr. Chifri Sulfer and the chairman and director Mr. Ajit Gunavardhana. Also present at the event were the directors of Digital Mobility Solutions Lanka Limited, along with president partner, heritage partners Dr. Aditya Vikramanayaka, chairperson of Slascom Mr. Nishan Men and chairman of FITIS, Mr. Indigadi Soisa, including key management personnel of PIGMI. 
delivery in the opening remarks csc chairman mr dilshan mira sekhar congratulated digital mobility solutions lanka limited on their achievement this listing marks a significant milestone for both the company and country's capital market and we look forward to their continued growth mr ajit gunawardhan chairman and director of digital mobility solutions lanka limited shares his thoughts on the debut and he said that it's been a decade long journey from a simple idea to becoming a publicly listed company on the main board of the colombo stock exchange He also added that this success exemplifies the powerful confluence of strong governance, visionary investors and exceptional execution by a world-class team all driven by the transformative power of technology. Dialogue ASEAN PLC Sri Lanka's number one connectivity provider is pleased to announce the appointment of Mr. Vish Govindasamy to its board as an independent non-executive director. Mr. Govindasamy currently serves as an executive non-independent director at both Sunshine Holdings PLC and Watavala Plantations PLC. At Sunshine Holdings PLC he holds the role of deputy chairman and serves in boards of several subsidiaries of Sunshine Holdings and Watavala Plantations. Furthermore he serves as an independent non-executive director at Softlogic Life Insurance, TAL Lanka Hotels, United Motor Lanka and the 1990 Sua Saria Foundation. Beyond the corporate sector, Mr. Govindasamy has made significant contributions to Sri Lanka's economy. He is a member of the governing board of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka and has served as the immediate past chairman of the Ceylon Chamber of Commerce as well as a former chairman of the Employers Federation of Ceylon. The British Council Colombo office today adopted solar power to generate 100% of its energy requirements. As part of the project and commitment to becoming greener, the Colombo office is installing 353 units of solar PV panels. Through this first of its kind project, the British Council Colombo office will save 285.97 tons of CO2 annually for the next 25 years. The official launch of the solar power system was held under the patronage of their chief guest his excellency Andrew Patrick British High Commissioner to Sri Lanka accompanied by Lisa Wonstall Deputy British High Commissioner and Orlando Edwards British Council Sri Lanka Country Director The initiative sets a strong example for the values and ethos that British Council Colombo stands for in advocating for the sustainable development. The peak hours of the operation at the Colombo office are between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m., which is also the optimum peak hour for consumption of electricity in Sri Lanka. The solar power adoption therefore will also contribute to lessening the load on the national grid. Speaking virtually at the launch of the solar power system, Scott McDonald, the CEO of British Council, said that this project will also allow them to generate an impressive 100% of office energy needs through renewable sources. highlighting their commitment to sustainability addressing the significant challenges of climate emergency and to contribute positively to the communities they serve the british council colombo will continue its endeavors to secure a greener future while also enhancing its operations and providing more opportunities to its patrons and members <laughs> People's Bank celebrated World Children's Day by relaunching Ethera Udana Miners foreign currency account with new features at the bank's headquarters branch on the 1st of October. In parallel to this People's Bank's Ethera Isura personal foreign currency account and People's Remittance Services were also relaunched. During the event, new logos were unveiled for Ethera Isura, Ethera Udana and People's Remittance in addition to the felicitation of 10 Ethera Udana account holders. People's Bank Chairman Sujeeva Rajapaksa stated that every year World Children's Day gives emphasis to the importance of empowering the children of today by providing them a sound education and creating an environment where they can be safe and happy. The Ethera Udana Miners foreign currency account was also introduced with the aim of supporting the educational journey of children whose parents are working abroad. People's Bank Chief Executive Office and General Manager Clive Fonseca said that many Sri Lankans who sweat and toil in foreign countries make that sacrifice and spend years away from their families in the hope of securing a better future for themselves and especially for their loved ones. Sri Lanka Triposha company recently marked its 50th anniversary celebrating 5 decades of service and providing vital nutrition to the nation's people. To commemorate this significant milestone, a series of special events and initiatives were launched, highlighting both the company's achievements and its commitment to the future. Sri Lanka Triposha company celebrated the 50th anniversary of its flagship brand Triposha along with its sister brand Suposha. To honor this occasion, a nationwide competition title was organized showcasing creative talents in art and design. 
The competition was conducted in two phases, culminating a grand awards ceremony where the winners received prizes and certificates. As part of the 50th anniversary celebrations, the postal department issued a the postal department issued a special first day cover to commemorate Three Porsches Golden Jubilee. This symbolic gesture reflects the company's long-standing role in supporting the country's public health initiatives. Additionally, Sri Lanka Three Porsche launched its latest product, the Calorie Bar, designed to provide a convenient and nutritious snack option for all people in every age. Alongside this, the company unveiled its newly revamped website, offering improved access to the information about its products and services. The competition saw enthusiastic participation from across the country and the winners were honored with prizes and certificates during the celebratory event as a part of the occasion a check worth 160 million rupees was also handed over to the treasury highlighting the organization's contributions to the national development these events not only honored the company's legacy but also underscored its ongoing commitment to enhancing the nutritional well-being of sri lankans with this new initiative sri lankan triposha looks forward to continuing its mission of nourishing the nation for many years to come Going in for a short commercial break now. We'll be right back with global updates. This is the nightly business report. Welcome back to the nightly business report. Asian shares pulled back from a 32-month high today as the impressive rally in Hong Kong paused while Japan's Nikkei surged amid easing concerns over potential monetary policy tightening this year. Several Asian markets including South Korea, Taiwan and mainland China remain closed for the day. The MSCI Asia Pacific Index outside Japan fell 1%, largely influenced by a 1.6% drop in Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index. This decline followed a remarkable rise of over 30% in just three weeks, driven by a wave of Chinese stimulus measures aimed at revitalizing a struggling economy. The S&P 500 ended little changed with technology shares gaining, but investors nervous about Middle East tensions and more U.S. labor data due this week. U.S. stocks ended little changed on Wednesday as investors monitored the intensifying conflict in the Middle East. The Dow, S&P 500 and Nasdaq all ticked up marginally, pairing early morning losses after data showed that private payrolls increased more than expected in September. The focus now turns to Thursday's jobless claims data, followed by Friday's key non-farm payrolls report. Notable stock moves included NVIDIA, which rose more than 1.5 percent. Shares of Tesla fell 3.5 percent after the electric car maker reported third-quarter vehicle deliveries below estimates. Shares of Nike slumped after the athletic footwear and apparel maker withdrew its annual revenue forecast, just as a new chief executive is set to take charge. And shares of Humana plunged after the health insurer said it expected enrollment in its top-rated Medicare Advantage plans for those aged 65 and above to decrease for 2025. Tesla reported a smaller-than-expected rise in third-quarter deliveries as incentives and financing deals failed to lure enough customers for its aging electric vehicles. Tesla shares fell more than 6% in Wednesday morning trading and were on track to erase nearly all their gains for the year, after the world's most valuable automaker missed expectations for third quarter deliveries. The EV maker handed over nearly 463,000 vehicles, more than the prior quarter, but about 7,000 shy of what Wall Street was expecting. The company now has to deliver a record number of vehicles in the fourth quarter, about 516,000, to match last year's delivery number of roughly 1.8 million vehicles. A shortfall could result in Tesla recording its first ever annual drop in deliveries. Elon Musk's EV maker is contending with rising global competition, most notably in China, where automakers BYD and Xpeng are aggressively expanding their presence in the world's largest automotive market, thanks to help from government subsidies. And in July, BMW eclipsed Tesla as the top-selling EV maker in Europe. As a result, Tesla has offered price cuts and incentives, but those have squeezed profit margins. The company is expected to unveil its robo-taxi product at a closely watched event on October 10th in Los Angeles, as it attempts a shift in strategy with a focus on AI-powered autonomous technologies. 
And that's all from us here at the Nightly Business Report. Join us again tomorrow for more key updates across the business globe. Until then, I'm Anuradha Vikramasinghe. Thank you very much for watching. Good night.